ਅਸੀਂ 
तेरे मेहंदी खाली कुर्ते में मद पून मिसल अस गए रही बे कफन भी क्या कफन की तरह रोज चादई इस लहद पे चढ़ाओ शाम की और तो एक वादा करो शाम की और तो एक वादा करो एक असरब की थी शाहजादी उसका साका था बास गाजी मश्किल कई गया सूए दरिया और कब्ज में कर ली तराई लोरियों में ये सची कहानी रोज इसको सुनाओ गी तुम शाम की और तुम्हें वादा करो हमने जिंदा से पाई रिहाई अब बहन पास होगी न भाई बात इतनी सी बस याद रखना मेरी बची है गम की सताई तुमने बाजार में तो सताया अब न इसको सताओगी तुम शाम की और तो एक वादा करो कि रोज कबरी प्याओगी तुम शाम की और
وليا وخافضا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توأى وتمتعه فيها تويلا صلوة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد Brothers, we have come here to commemorate the martyrdom of Bibi Sakiya Salaam Allah Alayhi When it comes to the shahadat of the family of Hussain we say a famous line in Ziyarat Al-Warisa Ya Laytani Kuntu Ma'akum I wish we were with you One should ponder, do we really wish to be with them? Are we really ready to be with the Imam and sacrifice our life for him? Are we ready for shahadat? Are we ready for death even? One way in order to get ready for death is to know what happens involved in the grave and what happens in Qiyamah. So I'll talk a few minutes about that. After we die, we'll have to cross through many stations. One of the most difficult stations to pass is that of Mir Saad. In Surah Fajr, verse number 14, we read, Inna Rabbaka Labil Mirsad. Mirsad is the station where we would answer regarding Hakkun Nas, the rights of people that we have trampled over. In Dua'i Makarim al Akhlaq of Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. We read, Warzukni Fawz al Ma'ad. Wasalamat al Mirsad. O Allah, grant us success of the hereafter and the ability to cross Mirsad with ease. It'll be difficult to cross with no problems, since there are very few people in this world who don't trample over anyone's rights. On the Day of Judgment, if we have hurt someone, in order to please him, we will have to give up our good deeds to him. And if that's not enough, then we will have to take up some of his bad deeds on our shoulders. So this is no small matter. The hereafter is regarding infinite life. So a message for myself and for you all. Make sure we don't trample over anyone's rights. And it's not only Qayyamat that the results are seen. Sometimes we see the results in this life as well. Especially when it comes to zulm on somebody who has no supporter. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad ala Muhammad No zulm is greater than that of the zulm to someone who has no other supporter except for Allah. Besides that, zulm also prevents our duas from being accepted. And zulm isn't always an, a ruler oppressing his subjects. Sometimes it could be, it could be between two colleagues. It could be between two classmates. It could be from a child to a father. It could be from a mother to a child. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam also said, whoever wants their duas to be accepted, his income must be halal, and he must not have any haqq nas over his shoulders. As a servant's dua doesn't reach Allah, unless if his, if his stomach is filled with haram, or has haqq nas on his shoulders. And if a person has done wrong, he should ask forgiveness. On the other side, if one comes to you for forgiveness, don't be hard on him. Be easy to forgive him. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, Let go of the one who did zulm on you, just as you want Allah to forgive you. Many of the imams were cursed at, but our imams would let go of that. Those of you who have seen the serial of Hazrat Yusuf, or have read or heard his story, we've all heard that their brothers did so much zulm on Yusuf. They, they were the cause of the separation of him and his father for 20 years. And then throwing him in the well, and then putting, and then going to prison, and then all the things that happened afterwards in Egypt. Then the time came, the brothers came to Egypt and asked for Yusuf for forgiveness. In the Quran, there's a verse, peace be upon Allah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad Surah Yusuf, Ayat 92. Kaala, la tasriba alaykum al yom, yakfiru lahu lakum, wa huwa arhamar rahimin. No blame on you today. God will forgive you. So basically, Yusuf said, don't worry about it. I don't blame you. I forgive you. And God will also forgive you. End of the story. How good is it that if one asks for forgiveness and the other side easily accepts? And it's even better if we don't hurt somebody in the first place so that you don't have to go to that stage of asking for forgiveness. So let's go over a couple of rights people have over us. 
One type of rights is that of wealth. We shouldn't cause loss to others' wealth, nor should we use others' money without their permission. Someone's wealth is like their blood in life. It's to be respected in this religion. And if we borrow money from a mu'min, we should return it on time. There's a hadith that says, if we borrow something and we don't plan on returning it, it's basically stealing. Other traditions say that an instance of theft is lying and deceiving in transactions, like mixing up good and bad things and saying it's only good, or selling something at a certain brand but it's actually cheap stuff. So stealing, even just barging into somebody's house and taking what they have, there are other forms we should be aware of. Maybe someone gave a donation to Help Out Center, but it was used for another cause, or it was wasted. Or the wealth that's left over after one year. Part of that money belongs to Allah and the Imams. Are we keep, keeping care of our homes? That's one right. Another type of rights people have over us is social rights. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said, a Muslim is one whom other Muslims are free from harm from his tongue and his hands. Are we like that? Am I like that? When we are at gatherings, are we respecting other people? Are we respecting their rights? Or are we backbiting? Do we respond harshly if someone bothers us? If a kid disrupts us or disturbs us? Do we show anger? Or are we compassionate to them like the Prophet was to kids? Another important type of rights is that of honor. We've heard the famous hadith. The honor of a mu'min is higher than that of the Kaaba. So in short, we should be careful of Hakkun Nas from the beginning. This is where we can see who a real mu'min is. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, Allah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad Don't look at a person's ruku and sajda and see how long it is. Rather, look at his honesty and speech and trustworthiness. These two qualities of honesty and speech and trustworthiness. Have we looked into ourselves and checked if we have these? Do we lie in order to make more money? If we want a position in our work or in the center, do we lie and start accusing others? To have an easier life, do we hurt others? Is our living based off others' misery? If we commit a sin to Allah, we can ask for forgiveness, and if we really mean it, Allah will inshallah forgive us. But if we hurt someone, just asking for forgiveness from Allah is not going to do much. We need to first ask the person we hurt to forgive us and make up for the loss we made to him. One person went to work for Bani Umayya. After he was finished working with them, he, was, he met with Imam Sadiq salam and asked, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad Bari Digar Salawa, Salyala, Muhammad, Wale, Muhammad, So a person had worked for Bani Umayya. He comes to Mount Sadiq and said, I worked for Bani Umayya and made a lot of money. And at that time, I didn't care about halal and haram wealth. Imam responded, if Bani Umayya didn't find people like you, then they would have never been able to trample over our rights. The person asked, what can I do, Imam? Imam said, will you do as I say if I tell you the path? The person said, yes, of course. Imam said, whatever you earn from the government, return it back to the rightful owners. And if you don't know who the rightful owner is, give it as sadqa on their behalf. The person looked down for a while. Then he brought his head up and said, okay. He went back to Kufa, and whatever he had, he gave it back to the rightful owners. And for whatever, whoever's wealth he didn't know belonged to, he gave it as sadqa on their behalf. In the end, he didn't even have money for his own clothes or livelihood. He got really sick. He was about to die. A friend of his visited him, and he knew the story. And the person told that friend that I, that I see paradise. So. When he was dying, he saw the paradise that the Imam had promised. When the friend went to Imam, he said, I, the friend you have, I, I promised him paradise and I've kept my words. So we can see the Imam keeping his words. He was kind and forgave and promised paradise 
to one who had worked for Bani Umayya after the real Tawbah was done. The person realized he did wrong and wanted to correct himself. Now we should look into ourselves and see what wrong we've done in our lives and try to correct ourselves and try not to make those mistakes again in the future, inshallah. And look at how forgiving the Imam was. If someone comes to us asking for forgiveness, we shouldn't torture that person. We have Imams as our role models. So just as the Imams are forgiving, we should also be easily forgiving. We've come to remember Bibi Sakina. Before I get to her, I want to talk about another daughter of a Shaheed. This Shaheed went to the battlefront during the eight-year war and defend against the oppression of Saddam and the other tyrants of the time who were supporting Saddam. It was the zahmat of these shohada that we are able to go to visit the shrines in Iraq freely. Inshallah, we all get the tawfiq of ziyarat this arbaeen with ma'rifat. We should think, what have we done for Imam Hussein and Bibi Zainab? So many lovers went to defend the shrines and gave up their lives. Constantly, Islam is under attack. We should figure out what our responsibility is. It's not always going to the battlefront with weapons, but we have to do something. It might be getting on social media, defending our religion, defending those who went, sending aid through legal means. There's so much oppression going on, we can't just sit and watch and remain silent. You can look at the conditions of Muslims in Pakistan, India, Kashmir, Yemen, Bahrain, Palestine. Look at our own communities. There's so much oppression going on. As Husseinis, as Zainabis, we need to figure out our responsibility. Let's not be embarrassed in front of the shohada. They sacrificed so much in the way of Islam, and they want us to continue their mission to promote Islam. We should not be embarrassed in front of them on the Day of Judgment. Back to the story of the Shaheed's daughter. The name of the Shaheed is Sayyid Ali Raza Musabi. He had a daughter named Rukaiya. Around the time he was martyred, she was three years old. Whenever he would come home and visit the family, with one hand, he would bring a new doll to play with his daughter, and with the other hand, he would do PR to his daughter. One time he came home, he was just playing with the doll with one hand. The daughter asked, why aren't you doing PR with your other hand, Baba? She saw that the Baba only had one hand left. She asked, where's your other hand? The father said, I left it at the battlefield. She said, bring it back. The father said, if I go back, I may not return home. The daughter was too young to understand what that meant. She just wanted her father to have both hands, so she cried and cried. After a while, the time came back for the father to return to the battlefield. He went and didn't come back home. He became a Shaheed, and his body was never found. After three years, the family of the Shohada got the opportunity to visit the shrines in Syria. They got close to a small shrine. The daughter asked her mama, where are we at? The mother said, your father, out of love for this baby, gave you your name. Her name is also Rukaiya. She is the daughter of Imam Hussein. She loved her father a lot. He loved her a lot. She also lost her father at the age of three. She missed her father a lot and was crying a lot one night. Then the enemies brought her her head. The daughter of the Shaheed ran to Hazrat Rukaiya's shrine and started saying what was in her heart. Salam. I heard you're like me and have the same name as me. You lost your father at three. I also lost my father at three. When your father wanted to leave you for the last time, your aunt held on to you so you wouldn't see the battlefield. When my father was about to leave with just one hand, my mama told me, don't look anymore. On top of your rosa, people give you dolls. My old father always brought me a new doll when he would come home. But there's a difference. You wanted to see your father and were able to see his head and talk to him. But I haven't seen my father. His body is lost. Please do something, my father comes back. I haven't seen him for three years. Twenty years after that, it was time for her marriage. The tradition is that the daughter says, with my father's permission, I agree. For the daughters of Shaheed, they say, with the permission of my father, I agree, along with the picture of the father being present. At Rukhaya's marriage ceremony, she didn't allow for the picture to be put on the table. She said, my father in person must come. The gathering was about to become a crime. Then a verse was read, Never think of those martyred in the cause of Allah's death. In fact, they are alive with their Lord. She saw her father and said, with her permission, I agree. After years of wanting her father, Bibi Safina had granted his her dua. Now let's take our hearts to Sham. The pain that Rukaiya was in, 
a three-year-old daughter. There's a phrase from a Farsi noha. Whoever saw my face, that had become like Fatima Zahra. Oh Baba, what happened to your mother's face? What torture did the family of Hussein have to go through? How crazy can one get because of the love of the world, he would snatch the earrings of a three-year-old. The enemies couldn't stand her crying and yearning for her Baba in the prison of Sham that they bring up the head of her martyred father. She's only a three-year-old. Daughters are filled with emotion. When the Holy Prophet was on his deathbed, Imam Ali was given the shirt of the Prophet. Imam saw baby Fatima crying a lot. Zahra Jan, what's wrong? Ali Jan, can you bring my father's shirt so I can smell it? Yes, of course. As soon as he brought the shirt next to her face, she fainted. She was bali. But what about a three-year-old? She wasn't given a shirt or a picture, but the cut-off head of her father. How much can a three-year-old handle? She asked her father, said, Papa, who hurt your forehead? Who made your head bloody? She wanted to see her Papa so much for almost a month. Every time she wanted to see, she would get hit, she would get slapped. Now she sees her Papa after a month in this situation. It didn't take long. She spoke for a bit, then a bit of crying. Baba, I wish I was blind and never saw your head like this. She spoke and spoke to her Baba, but after a while, her voice could not be heard. Her father's head on one side and her kai on another. Oh Allah, grant the shahadat in your path. Oh Allah, please protect Imam Zamana. Oh Allah, please protect our maraj and give them long life. Oh Allah, please don't ruin our reputation. Oh Allah, please forgive our sins. Oh Allah, don't take us away from this world while our sins haven't been forgiven. Oh Allah, akibat be khair for all of us. Oh Allah, give us the tawfiq of taking action and being on the path of Hussein. Oh Allah, so much oppression is going on. Please stop all this oppression, destroy all the oppressors, and help all the oppressed. Oh Allah, give us the tawfiq of fighting against oppressors and oppression going on on the best way possible for us. Oh Allah, grant us all the tawfiq of getting shahadat in the path of Imam Zaman. Oh Allah, make the heart of Imam Zaman happy and pleased with all of us. Oh Allah, please cure those who are ill. Please answer all of those who have any dua and hajj. Grant us whatever good there is and keep us from whatever bad there is. Yeah, yeah. Bless all the shahada, especially the commander of the hearts and the martyrs who gave up their lives so that the graves of our imams in Iraq and the graves of Bibi Zainab and Sakina in Syria be protected. Yeah. Oh Allah, make our last words in this world and the first words in the next world be that of the beautiful name of Hazrat Zahra. Oh Allah, please shower us with our mercy. Ya Hussein, 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 Ya Hussein,
نیسر شیر سے مانگا جو تمہارا بابا جب مجھے آپ کے قاتل میں ہے مارا بابا جب مجھے بے سکینہ نے ہر تماجے بے سکینہ نے پکارا بابا جب مجھے آپ کے قاتل میں ہے مارا بابا جب مجھے آپ کے قاتل میں ہے مارا مجھے آپ کے قاتل نے ہے مارا بابا جب مجھے آپ کے قاتل نے ہے مارا بابا مجھے بالوں سے پکڑ جائے تماجے مجھے آپ کے قاتل نے ہے مارا بابا جب مجھے آپ کے قاتل نے ہے مارا بابا وہ جو در آپ نے توفے میں مجھے باشے تھے وہ جو در آپ نے توفے میں مجھے باشے تھے
Yeah. 